It's hard to know where Dan Knowles ends and his banjo begins. His fingers pounce powerfully across the strings. His hand glides up and down the instrument neck, all in direct sync with a smile that confirms Dan loves what he's doing. Before every show, we always get together and I always tell the guys, now remember who's important here tonight. It's not you, it's not you, it's not you, it's not me. It's those people out there. Take it away, boys. On this Saturday night in Paris, Tennessee, at a fundraiser for Lee Academy for the Arts, Hands clap, feet tap, and faces smile. From the river to the Ohio, Ohio to the mighty Mississippi, from the Mississippi River to the sea, from the Mississippi River to the sea. Did you get your part? From the Mississippi River to the sea, from the Mississippi River to the sea. One more time. It's that happy time to have a good time sound. That's really what reached out and grabbed me. When the sound grabbed Dan, he reached out and grabbed the sound. The banjo is so much a part of him because he not only plays it, he makes it. Every hand carved, sanded, and polished inch of it. There's still a spirit in wood. And if you listen to it, it'll tell you what to do. Music and the instruments that make it have been important to Dan for a long time. You could say even before he was born. My dad was a musician. He played the piano, he played the musical saw, he played the mandolin. My granddaddy was a musician, he played guitar, he played mandolin. Growing up, Dan learned to play the same instruments. Then local radio introduced him to the banjo. Out in California, there was a station called KRAK, or Crack Radio, they play country music. And just before they'd play the news, you'd always hear Grandpa Jones, or the Flat and Scruggs, or something like that. I always wanted to play like Grandpa Jones when I went to playing the banjo, that's what I did. As a young man, Dan played music with friends and in bands. But in the 60s, banjos were not considered cool. So Dan chose the guitar to develop his gift for instrument design and building. When I was a kid, uh, of course back during the hippie days and all, I had already started wood carving. People were wanting their guitars carved. And so we'd have peace signs and doves and rising signs and, and that kind of mess. Necessity was the mother of invention when Dan worked at a music store in a California town where the closest guitar repair was two hours away. Gradually things started coming in and I realized I probably can fix that. And so what I did was I'd go out and to yard sales and I'd buy up every cheap guitar I could find. Dan experimented on those yard sale guitars to develop his talent in repairing and rebuilding string instruments. A talent that has matured into the art of making banjos owned by musicians around the world and here in Paris. At this point, we're just getting a lot of wood off this thing. These days, when Dan isn't making music like Grandpa Jones, he's making the instrument that delivers it. If you run it at an angle to the grain, it won't tend to pick as much. In a workshop just off the Paris town square, Dan spends weekdays working solo, and Saturdays teaching a class of local students who not only play banjo, but want to learn the skills to build one. I like to take a neck and actually relieve it all back through here so it's got a little bit of a dished form to it. Dan believes in creating banjos at that higher skill level, or not at all. The problem with really thin necks, though, is they hurt your hands after a while. The banjo under construction in this class is one Dan is custom making for students Will and Rebecca Turner. When Dan's building you a banjo, you can say what you don't want. You can be completely honest with him. He doesn't push you into any kind of uh, designs or anything like that. And you can see we're, we're knocking a lot of meat out of this thing real, real quick right now. This is a horse hoof rasp, if I didn't tell you that before. 
Dan started out as, as just Will's teacher. He uh, just kind of picked up banjo on a whim. He tends to do a lot of things just on a whim, but banjo's become a big part of our life. Watching him take huge chunks of wood out of a big money instrument that I'm gonna, that I'm putting an investment into is nerve wracking to say the least, but Dan's an expert at this kind of thing. For anyone who gets to know Dan, it's inevitable that he will become more than a mentor, more than just a craftsman making a banjo. When we got married, he played at our wedding. He wrote a song for us. Dan's one of a kind. There's nobody else like him. And we've just really grown to love him over the years. It's easy to see why Dan's customers often become his friends. Building a banjo can sometimes take a year or more. First of all, in the design phase, I take a lot of time in, the, in that phase. First, finding out what you want. What do you need? What are you hearing? What are you saying? What's going to take care of what you need? Once the banjo building commences, Dan forms a unique partnership with the material. What I do is almost like doing Zen. It really is. It's, it's a whole different approach to it in that you you're there doing what the wood tells you it wants you to do. And it, it does. I know people grin, you know, when I tell them that, but it's true. Among the different stages of building banjos, there is one Dan enjoys most, one he is challenged by, an artistic extra that has become Dan's trademark. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some pearl. This is a piece of black pearl. Uh, it comes from Australia. On the neck and peg head of many of his instruments, Dan creates miniature masterpieces cut from various colors of pearl. First, I do a design. From the design, I make many, many copies of it. It's glued to pieces of pearl, which are typically about 50 thousandths thick. I take a jeweler saw and I cut those pieces out. Today, Dan is cutting a mosaic of colors and shapes that will make Will's banjo a musical mural of art. It's something I'm really interested in, astronomy in the solar system, and I wanted to put that into my banjo neck. One thing that I really like about cutting pearl is that you have to relax to cut pearl. If you don't relax cutting pearl, you'll break blades. Once cut, the tiny pieces of pearl are filed to smooth the edges. And I take that design and put it to the ebony. I route out that channel. I'll put the pieces in, glue them in, level them, and engrave them. The result, an instrument that is a beautiful work of visual art, made even better when it becomes a work of performing art. Performs, I see his joy of life. He, he's having the best time in the whole world. <laughs> and therefore, people listening to him are having their best time at that, especially at that moment. Here we go. This is a little bit different. This is finger style instead of claw hammer like you've been watching me play all night tonight. So I hope you enjoy it. It's called, it's called the Sunflower Dance. It goes just like this. As much as Dan loves working with wood, loves shaping pearl into pictures, the depth of devotion he has for the banjo shines brightest when he performs. To me, if I can pass on the ideas that have allowed me to create, then I pass on the valuable part of me. And whether Dan's role is banjo maker, banjo teacher, or banjo player, the joy comes from passing along the art. Which gives Dan a sense of satisfaction and something to look forward to. If I could 
look down from the great beyond and go, Shazam! You know, old Bill, he's got my binger there. He can play the fool out of it. Isn't that cool? You know, that's, that, that would be wonderful.